Moi. Hey, Amber again. How you doing, YouTube? So, what I really need to speak to you about is gender care because I have my appointment and I still haven't updated you at all on what's going on. So, yes, last time I spoke here on YouTube, um, I'd had an appointment at the Laurels and I was then ready for end of the week where I was going, going to London for an appointment at gender care, which is pretty much a private version of a gender identity clinic, the NHS ones. And the appointment went really, really well. So it was with Dr. Lorimer, who's lovely, um, really nice, really nice guy. And we just went through all different questions back from when talking about how I found out I was trans and, you know, how I kind of went through the last year or two um, and the fact that I'm, you know, now on hormones and how I feel. So all the basic kind of questions from um, a kind of psychiatry point of view of, of my emotions and things like depression and feelings about being trans and my feelings about my own body. There's all of that, which is, you know, the standard kind of thing that you get on your first assessment. So that appointment at gender care went really well. It was kind of interesting that I went on the waiting list for the Laurels, the NHS Gender Identity Clinic, back in, well, I went on the waiting list back in January, um, two years ago. So that was end of, or oh, the start of 2016. Yeah, start of 2016, it's now the end of 2017. And it's so long since, you know, since I started that waiting list. But this, this appointment with Dr. Lorimer at Gender Care was actually the first time I'd spoken to a doctor who was a professional in um, trans healthcare. And it was so good to speak to someone and he knew everything I was speaking about, obviously, because he's an expert in it. But it was the first time I'd had that face-to-face -face conversation with someone who knew like more than I did, because you know I've done loads of research into all the different medications to find out what trans healthcare is about and things. And finally, someone who I could speak to on like on a level with and just be like, oh great, oh I'm learning, I'm he knows more than me, I'm learning stuff, and I feel like I'm in good hands. And it's not that the laurels and NHS pathway isn't good, it is, but I hadn't even got to the point where I could speak to a professional doctor in trans healthcare. So to do that and actually have that agenda care was wonderful. It, it was a really lovely experience and it, I actually felt quite emotional after it because I thought, oh, finally I got to um, have someone to speak to like that. What was also really nice is we then spoke about what I wanted to do over, you know, what I wanted to get from gender care. Um, so I want to be able to have a, sh a shared care um, with my local GP, which my GP have agreed to eventually after I kind of went on at them about it. So hopefully that should go through and I'm gonna come off spironolactone, which is anti-androgen, um, because I'm not too keen on, on that. It suppresses testosterone, but it also is a diuretic, so I pee loads, which is really annoying. Um, and it also gives me low blood pressure, um, so I get dizzy spells sometimes, and it does carry a risk of, I think it's kidney damage, um, which is not very common with it, but it can happen, so I'd rather not have that risk there because there are better antiandrogens. Um, the one which I'd like to be on, which is Decapepto, which is an injection you have once every three weeks. Um, so I, that's that's now what Dr. Lorimer has recommended. That's what I'm aiming for now is, is to have that on a shared care on an NHS prescription, so hoping that can go through. The other thing we spoke about is surgery. So what I'd like for, for surgery, now I know that I'd, I'd like to have lower surgery um, as a trans woman, that's part of my journey. And um, we spoke about that and I've got a long wait ahead of me with the NHS. I know it's at least 18 months until I see a doctor at the, at the Laurels. Um, and I thought it was gonna be 12 months since my appointment, it's now 18 months since my, since my appointment, which will put me about this time next year when I see an NHS doctor. So it's, and. At that point, I'll then be able to go forward for referrals for surgery and so on. So it's quite a long wait. So what Dr. Lorimer has done with gender care is he he may be able to um, just put in a good word and say that, you know, this patient is ready for surgery. And is there any way that they can be expedited um, to um, make that process a bit quicker? Because it's the one thing that really, really gets me. I get stressed about it and... I, my depression comes through with, you know, um, 
genital dysphoria and it's my own feeling of like not quite being complete and the incongruence which still happens and that still comes through um because I haven't had bottom surgery so that's that's the thing that hurts hurts me most still in my life is because I know that's part of part of what I need to feel more complete and more right in my body um and it's just so far off and it's difficult that it's so it feels so unobtainable because it's I don't you know I don't even know how long the wait is so hopefully you know there may be a way to exploit it it might not there might be no way at all but possibly so that's reasonably good news about the surgery just that there's someone on my side now which is good the other nice thing was that Dr Lorimer has said this person is ready for SRS uh, gentle reassignment surgery or sexual reassignment surgery whichever is the uh, most appropriate term and that's the first person um, in the medical world who's actually said yes that's what this person that's what Amber is ready for um, I would recommend her for um, a surgery and to have someone say that is just such a wonderful moment it was it kind of clarifies and just makes it seem like yeah <laughs> I'm not crazy this is who I am this is what I I need and should have and it's the first time anyone official has, has said it and said like yes that's that's you that's part of your journey and that's it that's also kind of what made me emotional when I left was that there's someone actually on my side and rooting for me I'm not the only one saying I'd like to have surgery please I I, I need that that's that's part of me but to have someone else now coming on board and saying yes she needs surgery she's ready for it and she should be put forward for it it's like that's the first person to say that I'm not the only one fighting for this now I've got someone else there saying they recommend me for that and that's and that's right and that's what I need so that was really powerful to have that that, that person say that it I didn't realize how much it would mean um but I you know I never had anyone say that up until this point so I guess that highlights how important it is so there's been lots of other stuff going on. I'll probably do another video over the next few days to update on all of the other things I've had going on, on over the past few weeks. Um, but for now, that wraps up my visit to Gendercare. It was a great visit. Um, it was reasonably easy to find, close to Marlebone tube station. And I really enjoyed it. And so far, I can definitely recommend Gendercare. There's still some wait, a few months wait for appointments and things. But so far, everything's going really well there. And I'm... I'm liking the service and it may be an expensive um, private option um, but so far it's really good so if anyone's thinking about doing gender care and can afford um, to go to these um, appointments and um, the appointment with the first appointment was £220 with Dr Lorimer which isn't so bad you know when you're considering that going to places like Dr Webberley who provides my um, prescription now I mean I think the first enrollment with that was over a hundred pounds like all of the startup costs and my med costs are each at once every three months I think my medications are about 180 pounds so there's ongoing costs everywhere with private prescriptions and and things so the initial cost of 220 seems like a big hit and it is a big hit you know I'm not rolling I'm not made of money I'm not rolling in it but it's overall over time and if I can get an NHS prescription which I should be able to now it will in the long run make it cheaper so i'll wrap it up there that's it for me today gender care good so far i'll speak to you soon see ya